Do you have an online account with TeamViewer? Would you like to take a few precautions to help your account from being hijacked? I will walk you through two steps you can take to prevent that from happening. Now, let's get started. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we will talk about protecting your TeamViewer account with two-factor authentication. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering. We're going to be going over the options for protecting your TeamViewer account. Then we'll be walking through setting up the soft token, or it's an app on your phone so that you can further protect your account. Okay, now we're over to our handy dandy management desktop demo machine, whatever you want to call it. Now, I do already have Bitdefender up and running in the background. You can see that I've already got an entry in there because I do have a TeamViewer account that I do use occasionally. And if you are not familiar with TeamViewer, this is something that you really need to have as a part of your regular bag of tricks because it's handy if you need to get to your machine at home. And if you're like me and you're the tech support person for the family, it beats having to run over to the family member's house to fix something that it's going to take you longer to drive there than it will be to get it running. But I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir with, with some of you out there. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead here and we've already gotten logged in and I'm sorry, I'm looking at several different screens here. We can minimize Bitwarden for right now. Now how you get started in the process is you go to where your name is showing up top and then click edit profile. Now it's kind of buried a little bit here. You got to look at it. It's two factor authentication it just says activate. All right. Now I do give you a warning here that it's two factor authentication only works with team viewer nine and higher. So that is something that you need to be aware of. If you are running older versions, you may not be able to do it, which may be an indication that you need to think about upgrading if you can, if it's a real old version of Windows, say like XP, I know nobody out there is running XP anywhere, but that is a reason why you might have to think about whether you can upgrade. So let's go, we'll go ahead and start the activation process. Now, as I've said before, and I'm going to preach to the choir on this one, and this is make a backup copy of the QR code. Now, whether it is taking it with your smartphone, doing a screenshot, the main thing is get a copy of that made somehow, some way. Trust me, when it comes to the proverbial oh heck situation, you'll be thanking yourself that you did. Now, once you've done that, and let me reach over here, I've got to grab the, the right uh, phone here. And I'm going to go through here and I'll make a picture of that myself. And we'll get that done. Or if you're going to do like I'm going to do, and we'll enter the key manually, this is because I'm going to be entering it right into Bitwarden on a desktop, which, big shocker. Most laptops or desktops anyway, don't have cameras in them, at least where you can kind of bend it around and, and look at the screen. So let's go ahead and we'll mark that entire range. And then we will click, actually, before we go next, let's go down here and we will click in the field. And it's just a quick double check didn't get everything marked. See, this is something you you need to be. Oh, come on here. Come on. There we go. Come on. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so now 
we can just mark that whole thing. And when I didn't see a consistent four digits all the way across, and that is something to remember is you need to do some basic checks as you go along. So let's go ahead and we will click save. And now see, that's already switched over to a number. So that's a good sign. So let's get, go ahead and click next here. And it's asking us to, okay, recovery code. Again, preaching to the choir here. But you want to save that recovery code, whether it's in, uh, you know, the version of TeamViewer that you've got, or uh, let's call it recovery code here. And we'll click save. Okay, see, now it's gone back. We're just about to get a code regen. So at this point, you can download it, you can print it, you can copy it. Main thing is go do something with it. All right, so, and it's going to make us do something before it does. Okay, we've already copied it. We just didn't do, didn't do it the way it was wanting to. So let's click on continue. Now, it's asking to enter the code generator by the app. So we've already gotten this done, and let's click here, and that'll copy the code, and we will go in here and do Control V and activate. Okay, it's been successfully activated the account. Your job's done. Now you can go home for the day. So this is going to be one of the easier options, or easier services rather, to implement if you haven't used Pit, um, not Pit Warden, if you haven't used the package we've been talking about. And I forgot TeamViewer for just a second here. If you haven't used TeamViewer, it is well worth looking at. Now, I've used a variety. I've used VNC. I've used a slew of them over the years. This is one that is multi-platform. Some are, some aren't, and is allows you to protect your logins with two-factor authentication, especially because you don't have as methods of here of staggering your two-factor authentication, you need to make sure that you've got a good, strong password. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, then let's go over here. And in TeamViewer, you have an option where when you're editing, I'll just create a whole new one. That'll be easier. We can go to password and I can say generate password. And... We will copy password, and as you see, that's, as they say down south, that's a nasty password. So if you're not good at coming up with passwords, this is something that will be very good for you to become familiar with using. It's a option that is well worth getting set up because you... And I've been bad about this in previous years, using the same password on all websites. Well, to, to a degree, some of that's getting fixed because different websites have different password policies. So they may not allow you to do use an asterisk as part of your password or where you may say your favorite password's been six characters long. Well, now some of them are saying you got to have an eight character or a 10 character. So at the end of the day, having a good long password is it going to be a pain to enter well yeah but look at it this way it makes it that much harder for somebody trying to hack into the account if you are watching this on youtube you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you're watching right now or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe now and enable notifications We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.